Gardening is truly a, for me anyway, a, a tremendous learning experience. It's all about risk. You learn what grows well or doesn't grow well in your garden space, whether it's because of soil or drainage, water or lack of water, and also the amount of time you put in, the research that you may do. And it's just learning over time, uh, growing into it, I would say, literally growing into it. And so this is what I call the lower part of the garden where we do more f uh, fruit trees. And where I'm standing now is where we planted cocoa trees recently and also a few avocado trees. Again, an experiment. We will see how they do. We do know that cocoa does not like bright sun. They want a little bit of shade. And so we, that's why we chose to plant them in this area. Uh, some of them are doing exceptionally well. We don't, know they don't like wet feet, too much, too much water. And this is clay soil. So we've done a lot of experimenting to see what grows well in, um, in this type of soil, doing a lot of amendments. So we're going to now explore the lower garden. So let's see what's growing on there. This is what I call the lower garden. This is the old garden that was established over time from 2013 and grew, grew into it over the, the years. Um, right now, there isn't a lot growing on right here because we're now getting ready to seed the beds. However, we do have quite a bit of peppers, hot peppers and regular green and red peppers, basil, as you can see, there is our dwarf mango. We know that most people got mangoes in like May, June. Uh, we've just been harvesting mangoes from that tree and there are a few more. And once we've, we're done harvesting, we'll prune the tree back really hard, particularly the center, so that it puts out quite a lot of fruit next season. Uh, this is also where we do a lot of our herbs. So this is a sage bush. We lost a number of them during the very dry season, uh, but we still have a quite a healthy bush here. One of the other things, and you'll see it as we walk throughout this lower garden, we plant certain things wherever there is space that it would grow healthy and a lot. So be behind or in front of me, um, you'll see up in that tree, huge passion fruit vine. And I plant passion fruit along everywhere, every fence. So you'd see passion fruit there, passion fruit all along this fence. This bed will, be the t will become a tomato bed um, shortly. Uh, we have the tomatoes and seedling. And You'll see this particular passion fruit vine. As long as there's no um, storm, no windstorm or anything, we're looking forward to a huge harvest. And this would be like our third or fourth harvest for the year. And along here, we've got sweet potatoes. I don't know why. Some Maybe somebody can tell us in the comments why they think our... Sorrel plants are not doing so well this year. Last year we got an abundance of sorrel, but somehow the plants seem to be a little troubled this year. And I, a number of my friends are having the same issue. This area used to be quite a slope and um, over about a year, I lugged up a lot of rocks, used shovel and pickaxe, 
and just built a series of beds going down to the hill to make it a lot easier to work with. Here's another experiment. I know that um, these are usually grown in ground or grown in pots on the ground, um, but I've seen someone grow it in a pot and allow it to spill over. It's a dragon fruit plant. So I started with just this teeny weeny little piece and it's grown quite a bit actually in about, this is about, um, I would say five to six months worth of growth. So I'm interesting, I'm really interested to see how that turns out. While I do grow a lot of my stuff in ground, I also do grow quite a bit of things in pots. So these are all peppers along here. One eggplant, all peppers, and they are on the downside now. We've harvested quite a bit of peppers from those already. And here in this bed is ginger. So I've just planted a new crop of ginger, so those will be coming up really soon. Here is one of the soursop trees. I call it a volunteer soursop tree because it grew without us having to do anything. It just showed up and it produces some of the largest soursops you ever want to see. Those are served up in our beautiful soursop drinks at Lady Sarah's. One of the things we spoke about earlier was really getting to know your land, understanding the type of soil you have. So for instance, here where I live, uh, it's mostly rocky clay soil, Comes, becomes very compacted when it rains, holds a lot of water. And so what I've discovered over the years is that fruit trees do a lot better in this soil than certain vegetables. So I will be planting like a lot of greens and stuff along, along the base of that trellis, but I'm focusing now on doing more fruit trees in this area and I'll do more vegetables in the upper garden. So what, where I'm standing right now is below what I call the star fruit tree that keeps on giving and giving and giving. So right now it's loaded with fruit again. And this is the fourth crop for the year. And from these star fruit, we make juices in the store. We make chutney and jam, we use them as garnishes, we put them in salads. And the, you know, people in, in the Caribbean, I think we take for granted the food that we have, the fruits in particular, and limit the way we use them. But there are just so many ways we can use them. You know, just how you use an apple, for instance, you could pretty much use a star fruit. This tree is pruned every year. We prune it back really hard. And then once it starts blossoming, it just grows crazy. Um, you could see the branches are all over the place. This one touching the ground. And it's not because we don't prune it. In about a month or so, once we get our last crop, we will cr prune this tree right back. And then next year, it'll look about the same. As I mentioned earlier about soil, um, the more you get to know your soil, the more intimate you become with your soil you will know what you definitely can't grow in the ground unless you heavily amend that soil. Um, so that's the reason I grow a lot of items in pots as well. These are just um, ends of onions, green onions, scallions um, that I use in the restaurant. I cut off the bottom if I don't use it, just bring it back and stick it in the soil and it regenerates. And there are a lot of plants, we'll go over that in another program, a number of plants that are regenerative. Scallions, we pull them out, use them, cut them off, replant them, come back again. And it's great. Money saving tips. When we first moved onto this property, we discovered that it was old agricultural land. There's some old agricultural beds still on the property. Uh, those we haven't cleared because of the deterioration of the stonework. But what we found that we were really excited about is that there were a number of soursop trees and papaya trees on the property. And so we have a lot of volunteer soursop trees. Like right now we have about 10 soursop trees that are currently in bloom and which is really extremely exciting. And every now and then we'll find a few seedlings under one of the trees. And these are two of them that have only just recently planted. And what we realize is that in about a year or maybe 16 to 18 months, we get fruit from a new tree. 
this is one of the many soursop trees that we have around the property. And this tree right now is just loaded with fruit. I have abused this I, I don't know. This is like a wife who's abused and stays with her husband, I have to say, because I've cut this tree down. I chopped it down in the early days because I didn't want it to grow here. I did everything possible to get rid of this tree and it just would not die. And over the past, since uh, I would say, let me see, Irma knocked, slapped her down a bit and then I just allowed her to grow. And in the past two years, we've been getting a tremendous amount of soursop from this tree. I mean, I'm just blown away at how heavily fruited this tree is right now. And it's a very, as you can see, it's not a very huge tree. Some of the items that we're successful with, um, ginger was one of them, turmeric, um, turmeric, lemongrass. So we get a lot of lemongrass here as well. These avocado seedlings, these are almost a year old now. And these are from avocados from our tree. Admittedly, they will take about five to seven years to fruit. But that avocado tree I planted from seed. I don't remember where I got the avocado from, but it's really producing some of the most beautiful avocados. So if you're interested, these are for sale. I have about a dozen remaining. Now, because this is really on an incline, on a slope, we are not gonna get to cover all of it today because it's extremely wet. However, I just wanna show you, we spoke about pots, growing in pots, and also growing on areas where certain things can drain. Up above, we talked about the sage and the basil. This is mint because we do use a lot of herbs and spices in the restaurant. And we have rosemary over here. So this is rosemary bush. As you know, rosemary doesn't really like a lot of water. So we plant it on just on the edge of the slope so all the water can drain off. It's grown exceptionally well. I cut that almost every day. And one of the other things now that I'm growing for the very first time, successfully it seems, is spinach. I've tried, struggled with spinach for years. And you will see all around this wall, from there down to there, is passion fruit again. So don't let anybody tell you that you cannot grow food in the Virgin Islands. That is not true. This is the chenille plant or cat's tail. And this is gardenia. You can smell. It has a beautiful fragrance. This is a crazy frangipani. It, no matter how you cut it down, it just grows back. And that's the thing about frangipani. They just, it's difficult to get rid of them. The same with, uh, this is the moringa. And you know, the moringa has a lot of health benefits. Every part of the plant can be used. So in some countries they use even the bark, um, the flowers. are edible too. We make lemonade from the leaves and the flowers and the seeds at Lady Sarah's. We blend them with pineapple and lemon juice and it makes a delicious, a delicious drink. Before I started vegetable gardening, as I said, I was very much into ornamental gardening. I'm not doing so much of that anymore, but I did plant quite a bit of ginger lilies, the yellow alamander up on up on the wall there um, and covering the wall is a uh, ficus so you have pink ginger lilies there and you have red ginger lilies over on the other side and lots of crotons I simply cannot run my kitchen without basil and parsley and of course fresh rosemary we need a 
about a cup of good fresh basil. A bunch of good fresh basil and some fresh parsley. Very important things is a Cajun cooking pan. We have them in pots, we have them in pans, we serve certain foods on them. Um, a must have. And I think every Caribbean kitchen should have at least one.